So the Oklahoma Sooners hosted the Champ U Barbecue this weekend, which was one of, if not the largest recruiting event that has been hosted since the dead period has been lifted. And if you've been to this channel specifically last week, you'd know that Brandon Drum of 24-7 Sports, specifically the OU Insider section of 24-7 Sports, was gracious enough to come on the channel and talk with us about the Champ U Barbecue weekend. But now I need to recap it because this was an awesome event. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from y'all. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. And do you feel like the Sooners are in a fantastic position exiting Champ U Barbecue for a lot of the nation's top prospects, and let me know what you're thinking there. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, because I do constant college football content, and you don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoy that content, be sure to like, comment down below. Those interactions, those small, are massive for content creators such as myself. But with all of that being said and out the way, let's hop straight into this, because there are a lot of prospects we need to talk about, and I want to start with Amari Abor. Now, I reached out to Mar Amari Abor after the Champ U Barbecue spoke with him about his experience and about his recruiting experience as a whole. And what I was told is he's enjoyed his process up to this point. Oklahoma, without a doubt, had a great time hosting Amari Abor this weekend. And one of the things we talked about specifically that I've been super interested in is hearing from a recruit's perspective on the changing demographics of how this relationship building process is going. Transitioning from Zoom to in-person visits has got to be just a world of difference and that's one of the things Abor told me. So Oklahoma really have to be excited about getting in Abor to Champ U Barbecue Weekend. If you listen to the preview of Champ U Barbecue, you'd know Brandon Drum told us that Abor is someone who's always loved Oklahoma. He's been a fan of Oklahoma, and Oklahoma is going to be pulling out all of the stops in order to be able to get him a part of this class. They're going to be fighting the likes of Ohio State, Alabama, but I think Oklahoma is in a really good position. This is a battle that we're going to have to watch. Now, this isn't specifically Champ U Barbecue news, but because it was brought up on the Brandon Drum preview, I think we need to talk about it, and that is Gentry Williams, the incredibly coveted defensive back prospect out of the state of Oklahoma who had his visit to USC this weekend. Now, if you listen to that preview, Brandon told us that he felt like USC was probably in the lead for Gentry Williams, and I don't know that that has changed coming off of this visit. In fact, when I actually got on 24-7 Sports this morning, one of the first things I see in the crystal ball section is that a new crystal ball has been inserted in favor of the Trojans for Gentry Williams. Now, make no mistake about this. If, if you ask me, the thing OU has going for it in this battle is the fact that you can get him on campus multiple more times, and he's slated to come on campus multiple more times. So you're going to get more opportunities to get this pitch in. Losing Gentry Williams would hurt. There is no way around that. Losing someone as talented as Gentry Williams from the state of Oklahoma would be a hit to this class. However, there is something that has stuck in my mind that Brandon told us when he was on the show, and that was that Gentry Williams was very impressed with what he saw during Oklahoma's 7-on-7 workouts, talking about the defense. He said, those guys right there are different. They didn't used to have those. And my point with bringing that up is Gentry would not have been the only one to notice that. So Oklahoma, if they miss out on Gentry, and like I said, this is going to be a long battle. Oklahoma has got a lot of great opportunities to make up ground and even get the commitment of a Gentry Williams. But other defensive backs are going to notice what it is this Oklahoma defensive room is doing and the differences that it has. And that will be ever apparent in the season. And remember, the last note I want to talk about before I leave the Gentry topic is that USC is crazy hot on the recruiting trail right now. They are unbelievably hot. But Clay Helton and staff have got to translate this recruiting success into on-field success. And USC had a good year last year, but they are looking to follow that up with an even better year and be able to build upon that. It would be great for the pack. It would be great for college football, but the results have to be shown. And if you're asking me which program is in a better area and in a better position for immediate success tomorrow, it's the Oklahoma Sooners. So because of that, because of the immediate success, because of the coaches on staff, because of the location, Gentry's a legacy, and they get multiple more stabs at Gentry Williams to get him on campus to build these meaningful relationships. You have to like Oklahoma's chances. I think Oklahoma and USC is going to be locked in a really, really interesting battle. Don't underestimate Florida. Florida offering him as a wide receiver, but we heard last time that Dan Mullen had actually talked to him about being a defensive back. That's one thing we have got to watch. A news that broke right after Brandon Drum got off the show that 
was super good to hear if you're an OU fan was that five-star offensive lineman Devin Campbell would be in attendance for Champ U Barbecue. Now, for those that I've spoken to around Devin Campbell, Texas looks to be in the lead, and the people I've spoken to around the Texas program feel very confident about where they stand with Devin Campbell, which is awesome. This kid is phenomenally talented. He's a Texas kid, so you'd hope that the University of Texas would be able to seal this one, especially with how important the offensive line is for the Texas Longhorns right now. I mean, it is of the utmost importance. But the Oklahoma Sooners would love to capitalize on talented offensive linemen. And Devin Campbell is one of those guys. And this is a battle that I think is going to be very interesting to see. I think that Texas may still lead... But let's, make, let's not make any mistake about this. If you are a top-level prospect and you go to Champ U Barbecue and you see all the alum there, all the stops that Oklahoma pulled out, and we already know what kind of event this is from the past, now I want you to magnify that because of how the past year has been. They're pulling out all of the stops that they weren't able to. They're making sure that this event is as good as it can be. It's going to be very hard to walk away from the Champ U Barbecue, at least not rethinking where OU sits in your position group as far as are they second, are they third? I don't know the answer to that. My point being, it's going to be very hard to walk away from OU without giving them a second thought, given the weekend he came here for, and talking to Bill Biedenboe, if you are Devin Campbell and you get to talk to Bill Biedenboe, that guy right there is one of the best offensive line coaches in all of college football. He's a tough guy to say no to, especially at that offensive line position. And when you look at his ability to get guys sent to the NFL, very hard to say no to Biedenboe. The last two names I want to talk about before I get off of this is one, Luke Haas, because Luke Haas, elite tight end in the 22 cycle, and Oklahoma always finds themselves getting great tight end play. They always have great running back play, phenomenal quarterback play, but tight end has been a really, really great part of that offense for quite some time, and it's only going to help all the other skill positions if they can continue the legacy of the tight end at Oklahoma. It will take the load off of receivers, off of running backs. It's just going to be better for the offense as a whole. And at the same time, I saw that a crystal ball had been inserted for Gentry Williams in regards to USC, I noticed that a crystal ball had been inserted for Luke Haas in favor to the Oklahoma Sooners, which is great news for the Sooners. Any addition you can get for this offense is going to be taken, especially when you look at the future. You have Spencer Rattler right now. We think he's going to the NFL this year. I mean, he certainly looks to be an NFL quarterback, has all the ability in the world. That's not a conversation. But then when you look into the future, I mean, my goodness gracious, you have Caleb Williams, the number one quarterback in his class, who all we've heard about is great things. And then we watched the spring game. He was fantastic. So recruits are already going to be very excited for a Caleb Williams. And then the last name I want to talk about, Malachi Nelson, is only going to help with a Lou Koss. Because though Malachi Nelson is not committed anywhere... Coming to the Champion Barbecue Weekend, that same argument I gave for Devin Campbell applies to Malachi Nelson, but we've also heard in the past that Malachi Nelson looks to be an OU lean. So coming off of this visit, very interested to see what the future holds for he. Haven't been able to hear too, too much about his visit. I'm going to be trying to see what I can't find out about that. But Malachi Nelson is a unique individual in the sense that he is so incredibly talented and he has so much time left before he actually steps on campus. And one of the things he said in the interview not too long ago is that he wants to commit early so that he can start recruiting for his class. And if you are OU and you are able to get the commitment of a Malachi Nelson, man, sky's the limit because this kid right here is serious about trying to get a phenomenal class wherever he goes and make no mistake. If you watch this kid's film, offensive players, defensive players, players going to the next level are going to want to play with that young man. I have no mistake about that. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you thought about Champion Barbecue. What prospects were you most excited for the Sooners to get on campus? And what are you looking for going forward? So the Oklahoma Sooners have got to feel great about where they stand exiting Champ U Barbecue with a lot of the nation's best prospects, especially heading into the month of July, which we expect to be absolute fireworks for commitments. That's it. See you.